And Tommy Dine said, hit the like button. There you go. So it's not all subscribed. So yes, anybody who's already subscribed, be like Tommy and hit the like button. And don't forget to share too. Sharing okay, is important. Okay, we get to the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga? <laughs> we, we did 50 minutes on the Woody Stakes. We waited 150 years. What's another minute? All right. Let's go with the Belmont Stakes. And this. so again, the distance is not the same. So mile and a quarter as opposed to a mile and a half. There will be a new stakes record on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we've got horses that have won the Derby, the Preakness, the Bluegrass, and the Wood all in this race. Uh, the morning line favorites are the 9 and the 10, the 9 being Sierra Leone, the 10 being Mind Frame. And uh, look, uh, I don't know, I, 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 we're going to go through all these horses, but this is Sierra Leone's race. Uh, this is payback time, baby. So let's go. I know the viewers always love that. Let's go with the first horse in the field. The Preakness winner sees the gray. An 8-1 to one shot. So, hey, you know, unlike uh, the horses that win the Kentucky Derby, I guess winning the Preakness, you don't get that much of a, an impressive uh, rebound there. So he's the same numbers as he was uh, at the Preakness. And sees the gray. It was a 9 in that race, John. So the best we've seen from Seize the Grey before that was really the last race, which was a 13. So a four-point top, shorter than a month. We expect a bounce, don't we? Zero chance. Zero. So I don't think this was as any shot. The last race, you know, he made the lead. Imagination came outside him and then backed up. He's not getting that situation on Saturday. Not only that, it's back on two weeks. I don't like this horse. Can, can, can he not make the lead again? Yeah, even if he makes the lead, I still don't like it. I don't like this horse at this, in this. What's Dornock going to do? Sit and watch? Dornock's going. Even Mind Frame is probably going. So just my opinion, I give him zero chance. Look, D1 Lucas has done a good job winning the Preakness. He's won two of the last ten or whatever with Oxbow being the other one. I, he didn't, Oxbow didn't come back and win the Belmont Stakes either. Uh, look, there's going to be 2,750 people rooting for this horse and uh, 2,750 million rooting against this horse because they don't like those big uh, micro fractions partnership groups. So I, I think, uh, look, it, it was a great story. I didn't like him in the Preakness. Uh, cards on the table. I thought he ran a great race. He did. Uh, the, kid, the kid gave him a fantastic. Fantastic ride, his first ever ride in a Triple Crown race. He rode at Saratoga last year. He knows the the way the track is set up. But man, target on your back is different than coming in as an underdog. Even though he's eight to one, the target squarely on his back as the Preakness winner. I think uh, Jocks ride this race a little bit differently. I don't like Caesar Gray. Okay, next up is Resilience, a ten to one shot. The Wood winner, who uh, you could say, uh, you know, he. He, he bounced a little bit uh, in the Kentucky Derby. And the Kentucky Derby is a crapshoot. We all know that. It ran an 11 in that race after running the 9 in the wood. So because of that, and also, John, yes, we know, what's, we know, we know, we know what I'm going to say. This horse has been up and down in all seven races. Oh, no. Oh, and that no. means he should give us at least a 10 or better. Because the last two times in this situation, he not only Im improved, but he won both races, including the Wood running a nine. So what do you think? And we're getting 10 to one. Yeah, he has an alternating line. Bad race, good race, bad race, good race. Just like you said, the only the only knock on the horse is the 14 that he ran was on a wet track. So if the track is sloppy, I probably wouldn't use him. If the track is fast, he certainly makes the cut. In my but you opinion. know what though, in the sloppy track, he ran a sneaky good race that day. I didn't think yeah. he ran bad. That was that was a key race with Sierra Leone and yes. yep. Reno. That, that wasn't a bad race. I thought no, he ran okay. Strong. I'm using this is one yeah. of the horses I'm using underneath. Yes, here, absolutely. Here, yes. Here's my problem with this horse. Bill came in after the Derby and he said, "Up." Oh, the horse doesn't go a mile and a quarter. And last time I checked, while the Belmont Stakes not a mile and a half, it's still a mile and a quarter. Uh, he didn't like him in the Derby. I don't like him in the Belmont. I'm not well, going to get beat. If he the trainer didn't Belmont said he doesn't want to go that far, I, I don't know what's changed in the last four weeks. His legs didn't get longer. Uh, I'm against resilience. And, and I liked he, him in the wood. I'm against resilience. He, he was 30 to 1, though, Chad. And the, the number is there. I mean, he ran an 11. And he has a 9 2 starts back. So he, I'm yeah, just that saying. Was a mile, that was a mile and yes. eight. I look okay. forward to watching him run in the house. Okay. Peter Pan. 
Okay. Next up is the Derby winner, Again. Mystic Dan, who came on and uh, really put together a gutsy second place finish in the Preakness, ran a 10 in that race. So really, look at this last four races, 10, 10, 9, 10. You're getting 5 to 1 on Mystic Dan, John. Listen, I give uh, trainer Kenny McPeak a lot of credit. He didn't have to run Saturday. He's now going to be the only horse that ran in all three Triple Crown races. So that has to count for something. The problem with this horse is the two big races that he ran in the Preakness and in the Derby. Now it's bounce time. I don't think he's going to put a third race together in five weeks. I think he has to react. You know, he's five to one. I don't know. He's not going to be the favorite. Obviously, Sierra Leone's going to be the favorite, but he's going to take a lot of money. I think he's uh, sitting on a clunker, personally. I was impressed. I was impressed with that last race. I, yes. I thought he was going to bounce off that last effort. Um, look, Steve Colburn of California Chrome fame uh, would tell you that this is the only horse allowed to compete because you have to run in all three races. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, I think – I don't know what to think. He, he was never running in this race. It was never really the intention. They were going to run Torpedo Anna in this race. He shipped up to Saratoga, trained good, trained better every day a little bit better a little bit better look i mean it's the horsemanship thing to do i applaud the connections for for running in the third leg of the triple crown at some point though it's got it's got to come back to you i think you know running against these fresh horses i i i'd like to see brian work out a rail saving trip if sees the gray goes resilient straws back i could see mystic dan ending up getting to that rail position which kind of plays to his benefit uh, I'm not going to completely give him no chance in this race, but I'm not going to use it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if Mystic Dan were to win this race, even though it's not a mile and a half, but if he were to win the race, you would look at it and go, wait a second, he's first, first, and second in three Triple Crown races? I mean, that's that's a, yeah, some well, company. Well, I'll tell you this. The winner of this race, barring, you know, the wine steward winning it, the winner, the winner of this race becomes the leader of the division for the three or the Clips Award. Because it's it's wide open right now, right? You have Mystic Dan won the Derby, Seize the Gray won the Preakness, Sierra Leone, many argue, should have won the Derby, should have, would have, could have, should have been disqualified, whatever. Francis, Francis, won the, 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 Francis won the Breeders' Cup as a two-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I think the winner of this race becomes the leader of the division. Uh, and I think part of that is Mystic Dan, you know, taking a shot in here. But it's a long year let, yet ahead. You're going to have to run against other horses at some point. Um, let's see what happens, but I certainly applaud them for for trying to run the triple crown. Yeah, and it does suck that uh, the uh, you don't get anything for it uh, because uh, we've been over that before, and we'll revisit this at some time. Okay, uh, next up is a really, really, really good long shot, the Wine Steward. Uh, the right, the the Wine Steward. You you gotta love the fact, John, that you take a look at the sheets. Uh, last three races, he's going exactly in the direction you want. The two races this year, he's got a 10 and an 8. That's really solid. Uh, six out of six in the money with three wins. Never finished uh, past second. And you're getting 15 to 1. By the way, the, the Franco on board, the last time he was on board was at Saratoga. The only time the horse has been at Saratoga. And uh, he, was, he was the favorite in that race, but he still won. So 15 to 1, I am all over putting this horse in my exact as along uh, with that uh, two horse. I think he's a lot more likely to react off of the 10 and 8 than he is to repeat or make a forward move. I don't particularly like him, but again, 15 to 1, I could see you made a case for him. I could see people making a case for him, but not for me. I love this horse. I hate this spot. Listen, when, when there's a difference of opinions between trainer and owner, in this case, owners, uh, it never works out. One out of a, a million times does it work out. So one owner wants to run in the Belmont Stakes. One owner wants to run in the Woody Stevens or the Mike Lee, which is uh, he's one to nine to nine in the Mike Lee, but that's neither here nor there on Sunday. And, and and then it comes out that Mike Baker wanted to run in the Ohio Derby. He didn't want any part of New York. So when you're talking about distances between seven furlongs, a mile, a mile and an eighth, and a mile and a quarter on a horse that I don't think really wants to go a mile and a quarter anyway, this is a hard pass for me. I do not think he even hits the board. I love this horse. I don't think he hits the board on Saturday. Next up is five, and this is a horse that you hit uh, at the Peter Pan, Chad, and Aquarius. I love this horse last time. And now, even though he's 12-1, to 1, you know, we, we could look at it and say he's expected to bounce. The good thing is he's 12-1. to 1. 
Yeah, but it's just too much development in a short period of time. Chad was right last time. He was all over this horse. I didn't think he was going to run well, but he ran the seven. Listen, obviously, if he repeats the seven, he's going to be tough. But the chance of him repeating the seven, I think, are slim and none. There's one race that Todd Fletcher seems to excel at. It's the Belmont Stakes. Well, I mean, I should say. At a mile and a half. That is true. That is true. Look, Todd's been a fan of this horse for a long time. This was the horse that was going to save Centennial. Centennial had been kind of quiet the last couple of years. Jimmy Jerkins was their private trainer. Jimmy ended up going to Saudi Arabia. They kind of remodeled, sent everything over to Todd Fletcher. This was their one horse from that group, that group after Jimmy Jerkins. And this was the one horse Don Little, the, the, the president of Centennial, kept telling me about. This was the horse that was going to save the operation. And being a son of their stallion, Preservationist, he, he was right. I thought the horse was going to sprint. Preservationist was... A big giant horse, but he had a lot of problems. Didn't run, didn't break his mate until he was five. Um, this horse, Todd started at a mile. He always thought that this horse would see out a distance of ground. And the way he won the Peter Pan, it gave you no doubt about it that he wants to go further. I, I have no problem with this horse. Throw out the Louisiana Derby race where he broke through the gate before the race, which is a, 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 a big homage. Anytime that happens in a horse race, you you know throw a line through that one, it never works out. And all of a sudden, you see second, first, first. It's a pretty good line, John. Yeah, but it's also a four-point new top without much time. And, uh, you know, for that reason, I would play against him. But again, if you want to make a case for him, Chad, he's a price. Why not? Here, here's my here's my only thing with and, – and, and talk to me about this through the sheets here, John. There's there's a there's a new top and a new top. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is this. If you have a new top and you're all out, Right, it's a head bob to the wire, head bob to the wire, like stronghold and imagination sanity in the Derby. Stronghold had a great number, reacted a little bit in the Derby. In this one, Antiquarian was a no doubt about a winner. While he didn't beat the wine steward by a lot, it was never in doubt. And I thought he kind of did it fairly easy. So even though it's a new top, I felt like it was within himself. And if you if you have that new top without being fully exerted, I feel like you can come back in a relatively short order. This horse shows a couple of breezes since then. I, I mean, breezed really, really well with Irad uh, on May 24th and then came back again on, on, on June 1st and worked last week. He, I thought he was the best of the of the the team that he worked with. He worked at the 9.30 and the second break rather than the first break like Mindframe uh, did. I, I just I, I think he's going the right direction. And 12 to 1, I think, is a big, big overlap. Hey, here's the problem. When you, here's my problem. When a horse has four lifetime starts, how do you know that the top really was the top? You know, he's lightly raced enough where his next race, what if he runs a five tomorrow? You know, it's possible. It's Just possible. We're going, to talk about a horse that, we're going to talk about a horse that has two lifetime starts and it's just a second. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just saying. So how do we know that that was the top? So you may be right. Maybe there's more in the tank. I, I, I can't argue with that. I don't know. But just from looking at enough sheets and enough races, to me, it sure. looks like a top. That's all. But I could be wrong. You could be right, Chad. I'm just, you know, that's just the way I feel. All right. Uh, before we move on, Ed Burke, do you guys think if Torpedo Anna entered, she would have won? I do believe that. Any chance she faces the boys this summer if she stays sound? I'll take that. I'll, I'll say yes to both accounts. Uh, from everything that I've heard, she is training like an absolute bear that he said she was going into the Kentucky Oaks. She looks fantastic. She's doing really, really well. The Acorn's going to be a tough race. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really deep field on the Acorn on Friday, but uh, I think she's she's the, the nuts in there, and I think she would make the lead in this race as well. And knowing Kenny McPeak, I got a feeling that we'll see her against the boys in the Haskell. Or the he'll, he'll, say that Rachel, he'll say that Rachel did it in the past. They'll keep Mystic Dan in Saratoga for the Jim Dandy. And he'll, send, he'll send her on favorite track they'll send her to the haskell to take on the inconsistent um top fletcher horse i just it's just just a feeling right now i might be completely wrong but if i'm right circle this and we'll we'll, we'll re-rally around it i say that torpedo anna runs against the boys in the haskell later on this summer in, in new jersey um and before we move on from fletcher's horse uh, betsy hobby wicker do you think todd has a rabbit in here because you do have the ten was, coming up too, and the seven. The ten's not the, listen, the ten's not the rabbit. The, the seven. It's it, it, listen. It's not. It's not. It's not a rabbit. This is what I call it. I call it a teammate. 
okay? This is it's not a rabbit. It's a relay it's a, race. It's a relay race. Protective, who we'll talk about in a second. Should be in a freaking maiden race. Stop calling him the best maiden in the country. Just run him in a maiden race. This horse was never, ever going to win the Wood. He was never, ever going to win the Peter Pan. And he's never, ever going to win the Belmont Stakes. Okay? I know Mike Rapoli's a kid from Queens. I know he likes taking chances. Run the horse in a maiden race. The only way, the only thing he's in there is to be a protector for mind frame and try and keep people out of his way. I think it's it's like roller derby style. And I, I, don't, I don't appreciate this. And, and I, I'm very much against this. I, I don't. I don't like protective in this spot at all. But I, I call it a a a teammate. I don't. Oh, they got that going on in uh, in, in F1 Tyler, too. Poor Tyler. The ironic, the ironic thing is with 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 Tyler Gaffney riding protective and Sierra Leone in post nine. It, it, this this listen, and I'm I'm not saying that this is going to happen. Okay, but I very much like the Belmont Stakes with Mucho Macho Man. When Rajiv Rahaj was taken off, and if you watch the start of it, it cost Animal Kingdom not only the Belmont Stakes, but the rest of his season. Um, I think Rajiv was riding against Mucho Macho Man. He was on that Uptown Charlie Brown. I'll never forget it. And uh, he was riding against Mucho Macho Man rather than to try and win the race. I don't know if Tyler Gaffleon is going to have sour grapes about taking off of Sierra Leone, but we know how tough he is to ride. And here's protective. There's kind of doing whatever protective is going to do. What, what is a cage bit, Chad? They put a cage bit on Sierra Leone. What is that? So it's supposed to give the rider a little bit more control. Okay? And I was going to talk about this when we got to the horse. It's a, it's a move that you would have thought, because the horse has done this and he's lugged it in so many of his races. Why didn't he do it before he, this? Right. So, so the article comes out that he's adding this piece of equipment. Fine. Then the article comes out later and Chad Brown goes, well, we tried this in the wintertime, and he didn't like it. So why so, did you try? So that part kind of got buried. There was, like, one article that that came out in, in the race form or the blood horse, whatever, and nobody's paying attention to it at all. So now he, he breezed in it last week, and they're hemming and hawing and saying, oh, he worked good, he worked good, he worked good. He always works okay. I, I, if Chad Brown was so against using this piece of equipment six months ago and three months ago, I just feel like he's overreacting to this situation. Maybe the horse does need it, but – is it too little too late? I don't know. But but to sit there and be like, okay, well, he's got a cage bit now, so all all is right in the world. It it corrects them, but it doesn't over – listen, horses aren't cars. You can't just change the, the, the brake light or something like that, and all of a sudden you're going to go straight. He's still a horse. He still has something going on that's causing him to lug out, whether it's a physical problem, a mental problem, or whatever the situation is. He's done this three times now. He did it in the Remsen. He kind of sort of wanted to do it in Louisiana. He did it in the Bluegrass, and nobody cared because he was in front by so much. And he did it again in the Derby. And look, Flavian Pratt is a tremendous rider. But Tyler Gaffleone's not a slouch. And Tyler Gaffleone's breezed this horse, ridden this horse, throws this horse, and he was still doing it. I, I would have liked more if Flavian Pratt went to Saratoga and breezed the horse. And I understand Chris Bond, the exercise rider for Sierra Leone, has been aboard for all of them, and he's doing great. And he's made $1.9 million. And Chad Brown won more Eclipse Awards, or awards in one year than I'll win in my entire life. But I wish that Flavian would have breezed the horse in the cage bit and gotten to know the horse while wearing the equipment than rather having to figure it out on the fly come Saturday afternoon. That's that's just my personal belief. All right. Well, first of all, let's get to Doorknock. And unfortunately, Doorknock, uh, it's, it's just uh, it's gone a complete – uh, three uh, 180, excuse me, because um, things were going really well for Doorknock uh, after winning the Fountain of Youth. L- looked like this was uh, a horse to beat in the Derby, and then uh, since then, a 13 running fourth in the Bluegrass and 18 running 10th in the Derby, John. Yeah, you know, listen, their biggest problem was they decided to want to give the horse a uh, education and rate him two starts back in the Keelan race, and that was the worst thing they ever did because the last race was not good either. So he technically has excuses for his last two races. But that being said, I think he's done. I think he's going in the wrong direction. I don't think he really improved. You know, he they had high hopes for this horse, and uh, I, don't, I don't particularly like him here. Despite the fact that his brother won the Kentucky Derby last year at a mile and a quarter, the way this horse has been training lately – it makes me feel like he wants to cut back a distance. He might be better later on going a mile 
or a race like in seven furlongs like the Allen Jerkins later on the summer. I don't fault the connections for running in the Belmont Stakes, but if you've seen his last couple of workouts, he's very, very keen early on. He wants to go, 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 and then they're kind of woeing him back, woeing him back. And it's kind of – he's not working the way that you really want to going into this race. I, I think he's he's a developing horse. He's a much better looking horse than than his brother Mage is. But man, would you I, have run him into Woody Stevens if you were training? I don't know. I you know, like you said, you have the excuses in the last two, and there's just that that part of you that you know when you know you have a nice horse like this is, you want to be there and then he deserves he deserves another chance at this race because they are viable excuses these aren't the excuses yeah. where it's the trainer you got beat in a in a 16 two life and you're on page four uh yeah you didn't like the slob yeah the blinkers what no this he had real excuses in those two races I, I, i'll give him i'll give him one more chance here uh big price if you want to use them uh you could use them on some vertical tickets and stuff like that but it's tough to trust him to make him a top pick but you're rewarded if you use him and he wins and it's, he's not impossible to win you're going to get big balloon payouts in some of these these multi-race wagers. Uh, Cesar Alvarez says, what's up, fellas? I guess hey. he, he's checking in. Ed Burke, hope you're right, Chad. Me uh, too. JW, they hardly use rabbits anymore, unfortunately. Uh, Art, I think Chad, Chad, Brown, Chad Brown's the one guy that still loves to use rabbits. Art Nell Johnson. Saturday is going to be a rainy track. Oh, here we go with the weather again. Good horse. Uh, like the gray horse, Sierra the Gray, going uh, to lead the way to the winning post. So Artnell Johnson uh, going with, uh, uh, I guess, going to be the favorite, which we'll talk about in just a minute here. This is not, is this not amazing, by the way? Sees the Gray and Dornock, the first time they met each other at Saratoga, were 1-2 on a sloppy track back on oh. July 29th. Now everything comes full circle. Sees the Gray and Dornock could be 1-2 again. All right. Probably well. not. Let's talk about. I think there's. A, I'll, I'll tell you what. I think there's a good chance that sees the gray and Dornock finish next to each other, one one place or the <laughs> other. I don't know where they're going to finish, but I do think they can finish next to each other. Let's talk. And about, who, who who was the favorite that day? Uh, well, Dornock was five to two. Uh-huh. Uh, sees the gray was definitely not the favorite. Sees the gray was four. Was nine to two. Uh, Drum roll, please. Was six to one. I think. I don't remember who the favorite was. Oh, okay. It's a good race. Which race? The maiden race. Oh, the maiden race. Okay. If Joe Hardoon is still listening, he probably remembers who the favorite was that day. Uh, that's like a that's a that's a Joe Hardoon answer right there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Protectives next. The twenty to one shot. This is the Pletcher horse. Gaffleone on board for the first time. Uh, as far as the sheet numbers are concerned, this year twenty three. 12. It's the maiden. You spoke about this horse. This was the. I, know, I didn't say anything about the numbers though. 23, oh, 12, 10. <laughs> so those are the sheet numbers on protected. Those numbers would be so good in a maiden race. He'd, yeah. be, he'd be the nuts in the maiden race. A 10? A those horses race? never wow. win. When they finally put him in a maiden race, they never win. Out two to five. <laughs> ever. Believe me, they ruin them. They ruin them. They really do. Uh, here's uh, one of John's picks uh, for the Derby. Was it the Derby? Yeah, Anna Marie. Yeah. 12 to 1 shot. Didn't work out in the Derby, but oh, overall... Oh, oh. By the way, go back and watch the replay, how good this horse really was. He was totally eliminated at the start, and not because I liked him that day. He really ran sneaky good. Watch the stretch run. Ben Curtis is now off. They, well, they, Ben they, Curtis got hurt. He was eliminated yes, at the I start understand. of a morning workout. I'm not going Okay. Okay. I mean, he certainly has a shot. Well, why so, do, why does he get a 15 then if, if he had a lot of big excuse? With the big T. Do you see the big T for trouble? I'm not looking at the sheets. Oh, well, that would help if you did. <laughs> I write down the numbers so I don't have to look yeah, while I'm doing well, the show. Well, I got enough stuff comments. to do while I'm doing the show. Well, write the comments down with it. The bus, yeah, I'll Drive write the, the comments bus. around with it. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, do you agree that this horse had a ton of trouble? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's why I look at the 15. I'm like, wow, I, you know, I, I, I thought he should have got a better break than that. So, not only did he did finish eighth. Trouble, the, the vets wanted to scratch him all week. His trainer ended up in the hospital. He couldn't feel his legs for four days. Right. He couldn't Everything, walk. Went wrong. Everything went wrong that week. All right. And we've got the favorite, Sierra Leone. 
Is it finally going to work for Sierra Leone here after not, I mean, that bad break of getting the two post position of the Derby and still, still nearly won the it big race. It wasn't a two post. It was a roller derby down the stretch is what cost him the race. He was bouncing off of Forever Young. He should have been disqualified that day, I hate to tell you, but his sheet line is as good as it gets. He's never gone backwards. Is there a T? Is there a T in his sheet line? No. Could you believe it? It should be a DT. Deliberate trouble. Uh, it right. wasn't deliberate. He couldn't keep he, he didn't have his cage bit on that day, so he couldn't keep him straight. But yes, now but, he has his cage bit on. So yeah, whatever. actually, uh, let's see. JW wanted to know: Will the new mouth guard help Sierra Leone? Chad, is the mouth guard Andy Sterling? Uh, uh, he's he's outside of his box every freaking day. Uh, look, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it's it's intent. The intention is good. I just. If Chad Brown said he tried it over the winter time and he didn't like it, it, it gives me concern that this is a reactive move rather than a proactive move. And in that situation, I, when you're nine to five, if the trainer's not super excited, and look, I, I'm, I'm the number one guy at fault about this. I get maybe too excited when I like a horse, uh, but if the trainer's not over the top excited about the equipment change, it, it gives me pause for concern. And he's a really talented horse, and he's a really nice horse. But at, if I'm going to take you at 9-5, to five and you might end up going off a little bit less because people really like this horse, I, I just – I'm not I'm not all in on the equipment change being the answer in this situation. And from post-9, guess what he's going to do? He's going to be hung out wide, and he's going to end up – He's you're just waiting for the drift. Now, what's going to happen with the, with the stewards in New York? That might be the even better story than that. Uh, you almost want to see if there's some kind of a of a bumping and see what the stewards in New York do out of curiosity. <laughs> well, uh, after what he had to do in the Derby, I, I'm not so sure the nine position in this race is uh, gonna it'd be like a walk in the park, considering what what he had to go through in the Derby. But we'll see. Uh, it's not a it's not a prime position, but it's been a lot worse. Um, all right. So, what do you think he's gonna go off at? He'll be uh, six to five. I can see that. And JW, you guys have Especially, almost. By the way, if it if it if it rains too, because his race in the Risen Star was awesome. Yep, he's got. It the... wasn't that bad. Not yeah. on the numbers. It was right in line. He has two what track races? They, they changed, that... that was a, they changed the racing form number. They gave it like twenty points higher two months later. Well, uh, okay. JW, you guys have almost double the amount of people watching than the HHH podcast right now. I don't know what the HHH podcast is, but I okay. guess it's a live show. All right, let's move on. Mind Frame is going to wrap it up. Seven to two. This is the second choice morning line. Pletcher, I read Ortiz Jr. Seven to begin Mind Frame's career. Very impressive. But as, unlike another horse, which I guess was the last race, right? Uh, this horse uh, did not uh, double. I think the other, the other horse was a 14, I believe. Uh, this one uh, went from a 7 to a 9. And that could have been considered a bounce, and yet still won. Won by 7 lengths. And that was also an off track at a mile and 16th. So, uh, yeah, 10, 10 position, not ideal, John. But Mind Frame really hasn't done much wrong. No, I mean, but do you want to bet a horse like this? It's the second choice. In no, career. I do not. Number not when I can bet Sierra Leone. No. Supposedly, he's been working with fierceness and keeping uh, keeping good company, and he's training well or better Look, than fierceness. Fierceness has never lost a workout in his entire career until he ran into mind frame on May 24th, and now everyone's saying that that fierceness is going to retire. I mean. It, you want to you want to talk about what a workout does to a horse? He went from being the the, the Belmont Stakes favorite or co-favorite to people saying he's going to be retired because Mind Frame kicked his ass. So let's just take it for what it's worth. Maybe Mind Frame just is a better horse right now than Fierceness. He's 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 feeling his oats. He he look. Listen, a, let, let me ask you a question, Chad. If he didn't, if Rapoli didn't have Mind Frame, he would have run Fierceness. That's what I honestly believe in my I, heart. I agree. He's yes. not running fierceness because he's afraid of this horse. That's I, I really believe that. Maybe I, I'm wrong. 
I don't, that, I don't think that Todd necessarily wanted to run mind frame. I think Todd was talked into running mind frame, and because he's training so well and training on work fierceness. Look, it's a big ask. It's your third career start. You've never run in a stake race, okay? It's it's just there's so many things that go into this. It's 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 a triple crown race. There's jostling going around, but at the end of the day, talent is talent, and this is what I'll say. When we talk about the Derby show, and it, and it ended up coming a little bit to fruition with Sierra Leone and all the pumping, nothing against Mystic Dan. And he had the best trip that day. But the best horse doesn't always win the Derby. The Belmont Stakes, unlike, well, I mean, there's obviously the Terra, Pants on Fire, a couple other horses, whatever. But the best horse can win the Belmont Stakes. A more compact field, it's a ten horse field. It's it's more time for you to kind of analyze, figure out what you want to do. Irad Ortiz wants to win the Belmont Stakes for the kid from Queens. <clears throat> Nobody, listen, everyone's talking about Mike Rapoli. How about the fact that Vinny Viola was St. Elias Stables? He he's got the Florida Panthers back in the Stanley Cup, baby. Nobody's hotter than Vinny Viola. Don't worry about Mike Rapoli. How about the kid from the kid from West Point, Vinny Viola with mind frame. Yeah, I'm sure Ranger fans are real happy when, uh, you know, it's like the Cleveland Indian fans when when they lost a World Series to the to the Marlins. It's like, man, we've been waiting a hundred years for a World Series, and this crappy organization that's been around for ten years with a crappy fan base wins the World Series. At least the Panthers, actually, you know what? The Panthers have a better fan base than uh, the Marlins do, so I give them that. All right. They still throw the rats on the ice when they get a hat trick. They used to. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they do that anymore. All right. All right. Team for selections. Chad, you're up first here. <clears throat> I'm going to take the ten mind frame. Lightly, light, lightly raced, but I, I think it's a Todd Pletcher exacta. I'm going to go with the ten mind frame over the five antiquarian. Ten wow. five for me. I'm not even going to get cute with a bunch of other horses. I just like those two horses playing both ways. Ten five. All right. right. Oh, me? Okay. I'm going to go. Uh, like I said, I'm taking Sierra Leone, no doubt about it. So I'm going to try to make some money. So I'll go 9 over 248. And I'm going 9 over 2810. 9 over 2810. You had 9 over 248? Eight. Uh, yeah, oh, 248. Four, eight. Okay. All right. I so. 9 over 2810. I just think Sierra Leone has seasoning. You know, I'm sh the bottom horse may be better than Sierra Leone. I don't know. But he has two starts. The other horse, I think, has a seasoning advantage. 